In this video, I'll be going over everything you need to know about TradingView from the charts, customization, to setting up alerts to the watch list. So it's going to be a pretty lengthy video. Because of that, I created a timestamp for every section of the video at the bottom so you can click on the section that's the most important to you and I don't waste your time. So as usual, everything will be linked down in the description. So if you're looking for the best broker, scanner, charts or newsfeed, it's going to be linked down there. So let's get into the video. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is go over the user icon, click on it and go into color team. And we're going to be changing this to a dark color because it's going to be easier on the eyes. When this is done, we're going to click back on this and we're going to go into drawing panel because it might not be checked. And you can see over here in this section right now, there's nothing and you're going to need it if you're going to be using trading view. So go back over here and click it to make sure it's there. So now that the drawing panel is over here, what you want to be doing is click this little to start at the bottom. And this is going to come up. This is going to be your preferred tool the one that you choose to put there to access this what you have to do is just go over here and just select and click the little stars beside and they're gonna appear over here so the one i have selected is the trend line horizontal line horizontal ray and anchored vwap you're gonna be able to customize them later on because we're gonna go back into this section to really make sure everything is properly done so now we're gonna be customizing the charts in trading view and there's something that you absolutely have to do if you're gonna be using this platform and this one is either zooming in on your layout or zooming out not many people know about this but it's pretty important so right now we see we're zoomed in at 100 percent, but there's something that you can do if you're using a smaller screen or you need more real estate and it's zoom out so normally i do zoom out to about 80 percent to make sure i have more space on my screen and after that i'm going to be able to zoom in all the other things to make sure everything is properly sized but for this tutorial what i'm going to do is zoom it back to 100 percent and the reason why I want to do this is just so it looks better on camera and for this recording. All right, so now that you have selected the right size for you in terms of zoom in and zoom out, the first thing we're going to be doing in this is going to be just selecting the right type of candle. And this is going to be for sure a preference depending on the type of trader you are and all of that stuff. To do this, what you have to do is just go over here and just select the one you want. Most people choose the regular one because it looks better, but there's a lot of people that do use the hollow candle and the main difference is just that the green one is going to be hollow and compared to the red one which is going to be full so now to get the max of this platform and customize it the exact way that we want what we're going to do is just right click go to settings and we're going to go into all of these sections one by one so the first section that we have is the body the border and the wick and these are the colors for the candle most people leave it like that or they change it to some different type of green different type of red but the green and the red is the classic color so a lot of people do change the wick so they put it something like a gray like this so they can really see the wick a little bit better versus other people that just keep it the traditional way so we're going to go back into settings so we don't want to save these settings and we're going to go back into colors because there's something i wanted to show you guys so when you selected or created a custom color it's annoying to not have it back if you want to sometimes do some little adjustment or stuff like that so what i like to do is just you know select the color that you want you can go over here and change it to something different and you can just create add and it's going to be a color in this panel over here these are all colors that i just selected or created for different type of indicator or sometimes i was just trying out different colors for the candles and all of that stuff so right now i want to go back to the traditional color so what i'm going to do is just go over here select it and put it back the way it should and we can see over here that's that's how it is it's back to normal so the next thing we're going to go is into this section over here this is going to be a personal preference like anything that we're doing to this chart is going to be removing this little line. I just find it annoying to always see this little green thing around the whole chart. So what I like to do is just remove it and just keep it very simple without it. I think it looks better. The pre and the post market close is only going to be important if you're looking at a daily chart. Right now we have one stock in this example and the market is currently closed because I'm recording this on the weekend. But if it would be a Monday or Tuesday or any day of the week and we are pre market. So that means before 9 30 this is going to be important because it's going to show me where the stock 
is considering to its daily chart because in certain scenario the stock you know it's gapping up a lot or gapping down a lot so you're able to have this little indicator like this price over here but you're going to be having it in blue or orange depending if it's pre or post market so the next section that we have is the high and the low and it is pretty self-explanatory so it's going to just show you you know where's the recent low and where's the high it's more important when you're looking at stuff like intraday it's going to show you over here you know what's this line over here here and also the recent high considering the range that you are looking at so right now we can see that we're looking at all of this range so it was showing us that this is the high but it's going to be more important you know if you're really looking for like a specific time frame or like an intraday session it's going to be a little better i prefer not to put it on because i like to really have it less on my chart and i feel it's the best way to go so moving along we're going to go into the next section which is super important this is the session so Right now, it's only showing us the regular trading session. So that means from 9.30 to 4 p.m. But we want to see also what's happening pre-market. So what you're going to do is just click here, go into extended trading session. And now it's going to show you, you know, the pre and the post-market. And it's going to give us so much more information, which is extremely important so precision we're going to leave it to default and also time zone new york time zone is normally the right time because you're looking at the market time so we want to keep it exactly like that so we're going to be moving along into the status line and this is some settings that are really really personal it doesn't mean you have to change any of them it's going to be really depending on you and what you prefer to see on your chart so this over here are going to be this specific line so if you want to remove the title and i'm going to be doing so because we're going to be doing something later on i'm going to remove the open close value which is not something i really want to see or i could say you could leave it depending on what trading platform you're using so we're going to leave it for this example and bar change value so this i'm going to change it because there's something that's a little bit weird with trading view is when you're looking at an intraday chart this bar change value is going to just be the actual bar over here and it's not going to be the full daily chart and how much it's actually moving on the day so i rather just remove this one so i'm just going to leave the open high low and close value which you're going to be appearing over here so the next thing is title so this is going to be just you know what you prefer is for the indicator over here you could remove it or leave it it's going to be dependent and value you can leave it or remove it i prefer just to remove it i found it a little bit better and background over here is just going to be if there's a background behind this value and you can put one if you prefer just can make it a little bit more clean to read you know what's happening over here by the way at any point during this video don't forget to check out the link in the description so now we're going to be moving along into scale and this is going to be a couple more things that are quite important so symbol last price so this you for sure want to leave it on because it's this over here if you don't have it you're going to be able to see what price it's currently trading at and i think it's pretty important so this we're going to just leave it at symbol last price indicator value and financial value so this i think it's pretty important for the volume so over here here i'm just gonna move this a little bit bigger we can see you know volume is gonna be 65.245 so it's gonna tell us you know what the current value when it comes to volume and it's gonna show us on our chart at it's happening so if you pay close attention to volume this is something that you definitely want to have on your chart but the next thing is going to be no overlapping label so i'll show you guys an example of what it is so if we go over here and we select you know a drawing line and we're gonna put it at the same value so 972 we can see that we have 972 and 972 so it's gonna actually put the two value you know above or below each other so nothing is over anything and i think it's quite good it's annoying sometimes when you do have multiple line because it's gonna kind of uh mix you know what price is what line so when you have like too much on your chart it's not something you actually want but overall if you just have like a small thing i think it's gonna be pretty uh, pretty good the following thing here is going to be countdown to bar close this is gonna be if you're looking at a 15 minute to five minute or one minute it's going to tell you how many seconds or minute is left to the current candle that's being printed on your chart so sometimes if you're using some kind of specific bar value or you want to just buy the next candle that breaks you know exactly how much time you have left before your strategy becomes valid and this could be good in certain scenario i prefer to just remove it because i know depending on the time of day how much time is left to that candle so for the plus button over here we're just going to remove it we don't need to see anything on our chart to that we have currency and unit always invisible so that's totally fine otherwise you know you can say 
uh, always visible it's going to show you know usd over here so always invisible because you can assume you know what currency you're trading at and all of that stuff so the next thing is going to be scale placement and this is going to be your scale over here if you want to put it on the left side which would be weird it's going to be looking like this i rather leave it on the right and it's going to be so much more simple and so much better so time hour format i leave it at 24 hours and date format it's not going to matter much but you can just leave it like this or you can actually change it depending on what you prefer for me it doesn't really matter so i leave it at the way it is so moving on to appearances so we're going to change this over here so this is going to be some more interesting settings for sure because it's going to be really what you're looking at so gradient i rather just not have it it's quite annoying when it just change color especially if you're looking at many charts it just creates some nuance that you kind of don't want so i like to leave it this one or actually go a little darker like this on the black mode depending on you know the contrast on your screen and everything you can also go lighter if you prefer but that generally you just go a little bit darker so vertical line these are going to be these ones over here i like to have some just because it creates some kind of depth to the the chart so i just leave it at something like an eight and this one i rather just have it as the dotted line i think it looks a little bit better and we can actually just boost it up just one bit and also 18 percent so you guys saw what i did so you know i just click you know it, i choose this the basic color that it comes with and you can just choose the opacity whatever you prefer so we can have a good contrast like this over here so session break i personally don't like it we can see you know it's going to give you a big line where you kind of don't need it because we already have a pre-market and our post market in different kind of colors so pre-market over here post market over there so we don't need this extra line for nothing cross air is this little thing Thing that you can see this x uh, you can put something wider or you can put something darker i like to have it a bit darker so it's not flashing too much on my screen and this is going to be pretty good so the text so because we do have changed as we said before the screen size and i put it back to 100 percent but i normally choose 80 so what i do is i just boost this to something like a 20 and it's i'm finally going to be able to see you know what's really the price that it's currently trading at and it's going to be way better there's one thing that i just passed over and this is pretty important it's the watermark and we can see over here it's going to appear it right there and what i like to do with this is just put it you know lighter so i can know which one i'm looking at or which stock because sometimes i have many stocks on my screen so it just makes it so much better so that's the way i kind of like to have this over here and that's also the reason why i took off the title over here because i have it on my chart there next thing you know line these are going to be the line that separates the stuff on your chart so you can see right now you have a line over here i think it looks better if you do put one so this is going to be pretty good at something like you know uh 52 so we're going to leave it like this so navigation always invisible pan always invisible so this is fine so this is going to be quite important right it's going to show you you know the top and also the bottom and also the right so if you want a bigger margin at the bottom you can just put 20 if you want some bigger margin at the top you can just change go back over here and you know put 20 also so it's going to just show you a bit more space above and below so it's going to be really dependent on what you need and what you prefer i like to put something normally around the 10 because we're going to be creating something with indicators so it's going to help us you know with all the features and all of that customization so we're going to leave it at 10 for now so moving along to the next section which is going to be trading and this we're going to be doing a couple things because we're not using trading view as a broker we're only using it for trading or charting i would say you're just going to unclick this so it's going to remove this big thing over here that you don't want to see also we're going to remove all this stuff you know orders we don't need all of this so we're going to remove all this and it's going to be better just like this so the next thing that's going to be pretty important is going to be events so if we go back to something like a daily chart right now we can see you know when we go at the bottom it's going to have the earnings earnings and earnings so it's going to tell you, you know, when the earnings are happening and when they're not so you can know if you're holding a position overnight maybe you want to be doing something different with your position because on earnings it moves a lot you can also leave dividends on chart so this is going to be something like if you're looking at spy it's going to show you here you know there's dividends on this chart at this current price so if ever we're gapping down or gapping up on the dividends or whatsoever you know it's the reason why it's actually happening so split on charts leave it like this so if you have some split it's going to show you the split if there's earnings it's going to show the earnings and i don't like to put the earnings break because when you look at a stock you can kind of see you know this big line and it's just a little too much we already know looking at the bottom that there is earnings so that's going to be good enough so when you create it you know everything that you want over here you can definitely 
just save a template so save as and it's gonna just save this so if ever you're looking to just load it into some different chart you can do it this way i prefer to do it in a different manner but i still do have some layout that are saved from probably a couple of years ago so in this section we're going to be customizing you know the layout but also you know watch list and all of that stuff because there's many things that you can do with trading view and it's going to help you a lot you know organizing your stuff what you want to be doing first is go over here because we did create a lot of settings so you probably want to save it if it's on auto save i highly recommend that you actually remove it because sometimes you tweak it or you change a couple of things and what's going to happen after is that it's going to automatically save this layout that you didn't really want so what you're going to do is just remove this and we're going to create save layout and it's also a good thing to actually rename it so we're going to go over here and we're going to put just you know trading so we're going to keep it very simple so this is going to be saved for now and this is pretty good if you want to make a new copy of this layout you can actually just create make a copy and you know create trading we'll put it at two for this and you're going to have a separate layout over here so, so if you have multiple screen you can actually just put this layout on a different screen and it's going to be pretty good because right now I'm using four screens so I can have layouts on different screen and it really works well so we're going to go back into this section over here and you guys can see I have multiple layout and the one that I recently used you can also load the layout if ever you're opening it on a different computer and you want to load what you had before just click load the layout and all your choices are going to be there and it's going to be just you know a click away from loading the one you want so if we go back over here this section is quite done it's quite simple you just save your stuff over there what's important is this little thing right beside so we're going to click on this and this is where you can do a lot of custom Customization when it comes to you know layout and also setting on your charts so right now what we're going to do is go on a four screen like this and we can see that right now we have three that actually save the layout but there's one that's not so what we can do is just go into first settings and apply all so this is going to just create like a sync for everything the next thing you want or you don't want which is going to be dependent of your style and what this layout is good for is going to be symbols so this means that if ever i change anything so if i go to neo it's going to change it on the four but if i go back over here and i unclick this i can put five and we can see over here that it only changed this one but not the other one so if you're watching multiple stock at once what's recommended is to not link them but if you're looking to just look at multiple time frame on one just go into symbol and then you can click on this one and you know just change the time frame for this and then over here you can have one that's maybe 15 minutes and we're gonna load it once again like this so it's a little bit better and this one you know we have a 30 minutes so you can have like multiple one and then you have your daily chart so you can have like a full scope full big picture of everything that's happening with this stock so if we go back over here we can see that there's many different choices of layout and also interval so this i personally don't like that means it's always going to be you know switching to like the same time frame and this is going to be your crosshair so that means like if you have this one it's going to move on everything and you guys can see it's quite confusing because you don't know where you actually are so i like to remove this and interval and time i don't touch these things so this one is only going to be the one that i might have or might not have depending on what's going on following along we're going to go into the drawing over here and we're going to put one and there's something that you're going to see is this one only appearing on this chart but even if it's the same chart it's not showing up on this one to have it appear what you need to do is just click this little thing and what's going to go happen now is when you click something it's going to be appearing on every single chart so sometimes you do want this sometimes you don't and if you want to just remove them just click remove to drawing and everything is going to be good to go so when you're using trading view you have this section over here that you can actually select volume gainer there's multiple categories of stock you know gap gainers so it gapped and it moved up it's going to be some interesting stocks that have most likely relative volume or have some outlier moves so this is pretty good but sometimes you do want to have your own watch list so this is to see every single stock that's moving and you know it's called the hot list to have your personal watch list just click over here and you can create really the one that you would like this is what i prefer and you guys can see i always have separators so if i look at you know fresh gappers i'll put it over here if i look at day two plays i'm gonna put it over there so to create a custom watch list just click over here and you know 
know, create new list and then you can create, you know, watch list or whatever name you prefer. I made a mistake, but it's going to be fine for this tutorial. Over here, you know, you can just click add the, to the watch list and it's going to appear over here. There's also categories that you can add. So if you go over here, you can select what you want. So you want maybe volume also extended hour percentage change and everything is going to appear. And just, you know, if you want to just make it bigger, just click like this and you can have a better view of what's happening. So sometimes you do have actually a lot of stock in a watch list and you want sometime a different watch list. And for trading view, there's something that's not really nice is you can just see every Every watch list that you have at once you need to see only one at the same time and that really annoys me but there's actually a feature that helps you do a couple things and it's add section so over here you guys can see I have a title so sometime I can put a bunch of stock in the first section and you know rename the section the second section as uh, like day two like I did on the other one so I can know which stocks are what and what strategy is going to be related to the stock I'm actually watching so this helps me sometimes organize my workflow when I'm looking at stock pre-market. So for the rest of this tutorial, what we're going to do is go into a single layout because it's going to be way easier and we're going to put a stock that's actually trading volume so we can see what's happening. So we have Apple in this example because the chart looks pretty strong and it was a pretty good mover last week. Right now, in terms of indicator, we don't have much and this is going to be something that we do need to add because most strategies do require indicators. Some people say you don't, but most people say you will probably need at least one one or two. So right now we do have volume and something that's really annoying for me and you guys probably saw in this tutorial is when the chart like this goes over the uh, the volume goes over the chart. So to have something like this separate, just go into this and say move to new pan below. So now you're going to have it in a sick separate section and it's going to make it so much cleaner, so much better. And when you're looking at different type of stock, it's going to make it easier. And what I said before into the setting that you need to you know how a top or a bottom over here, this is going to be related to also this. So it's going to help you, you know have a cleaner chart and just make sure, you know, it looks better. So you can see over here, we always have a bit of a distance. And even if you're looking at the top over here, we do also have a distance. So it's going to help us, you know, have a, have a cleaner layout. And I think it's quite important for this. So if you want to add an indicator, just click on indicator and, you know, just type in what you want. You can definitely test out a bunch of indicator, but what I prefer is VWAP. And you guys can see right now, there's really a lot of things. So we want to customize it. Just click on it. You can go to settings or you can go from this over here. It's going to be dependent on what you prefer. So I'm going to remove these upper and lower band. This, you know, you can change the color to something that you prefer. Dark purple is my color for my VWAP and I prefer it this way. I'm going to also remove, you know, band fill. And, you know, you can do all of these settings to any indicator. But what's really, really important for for me, it's this over here. So right now, if we look at this on, you know, a one hour chart, it's still going to show the VWAP. If you look, you know, at a daily, it's still going to show it. So it's going to be really annoying. So what I like to do is just go into the settings and I don't want to see it on the monthly chart. I don't want to see this indicator on the weekly chart, daily chart, hourly chart. I only want to see it on either second or a minute and up to something like a five minute chart. So that means if I go into a five minute, I'm going to have my VWAP. If I go into a 15 minute, I don't have it. So this is so much better than having it on every time frame because you probably don't want to have all your indicators on every single time frame that you're looking at. Sometimes I like to use moving average, but it's only going to be on a daily chart. It's not going to be on an intraday chart. So that's quite important for me. So when this is done, you can also do you no know, setting and say over here, save as default. So right now, every time I add VWAP, it's going to have the exact same settings. So when I'm building up charts or adding back in the it is in the future. If I change something, everything is going to be good to go. Also, something that I like to do is go into, you know, the setting over here, go into input or style. And I like to remove the label price on scale. So at least I don't see it here. Here, I only have my price and in for volume, I'm still going to have it. But for at least VWAP and moving average, it's not going to pop up over here. So if I look at something like a five minute, I can see where does my VWAP is. It doesn't need to cluster all my scale over here. Everything is going to be just perfect like this. So moving along with this tutorial, we're going to be doing something also to save us time in the future. Over here, we can see we have multiple time frame 1, 2, 3, 5, 15, 30. And these are my favorite ones. So these are the one I have selected. What you want to do is probably just select, you know, the one you prefer. I actually don't really use the three minutes anymore. So I'm just going to keep it at two and also the 5, 15, 30. I'm using more these 15 right now. So I'm going to remove it and over here. 
So right now you guys can see I only have a couple time frames, so it's easier, you know, to just scroll through a couple of things. Also, quite important to know that if you just type the time frame on your chart, it's gonna put everything that you want, right? 45. If you put, you know, one minute, it's just there, two minutes frame, it's an easier way to do it. And also same thing as when it comes to, you know, trend line and all of this stuff, they all have some hot keys. So Alt T is for my trend line. So I just go, you know, Alt T and after that, I can just, you know, draw what I want. And I'll also add Alt J, which is this one, Alt H, which is the horizontal line, which are just some stuff to, you know, when you're getting super used to the platform or whatsoever, it just helps a lot. You know, it's just so much faster to put everything everything instead of having to really you know go over here click and back and forth you also have this that we created before so if ever you want to just add anything it's always there normally i just put it at the bottom over here so everything i need to go i can just click because sometimes I do have this close uh, depending on the chart that I'm looking at. So it's just easier um, like this. If you want to change any kind of indicator or I would say horizontal line or any tools color, just go into your settings and you can just create, you know, change the color, add the price label. When you change the color, it's just going to save automatically to the new color that you change. So you don't have to do anything after. So any new line that you put like this, it's going to be this new color. Same thing with any other tools. So the last thing we're going to talk about is it's just going to be setting up alerts so there's a few way of doing so so you can just you know put a line and also you know just add an alert to it you know just click over here and set what you prefer or you can do it in a different manner so you can just click over here and say just add alerts put it the price that you prefer and it's going to put this orange line that you can also change the color of course but this is going to appear on any chart that you have on your screen even if it's on a different layout so for example I have a couple layout on multiple screen this line is going to show on every single screen and when this pops up it's going to be pretty simple it's going to show me over here that this line has crossed and also you have your alert log if you want to remove all the alerts that you have just click you know remove all active and it's going to be done this way so it's a pretty good way of creating alerts but there's also something that you can do you can put an alert to an indicator so let's say if vwap you know if the price crosses below vwap you know cross is going to say cross over here below that price it's going to tell me so instead of value i'm going to put vwap and it's going to you know fix this over here so i'm going to say continue anyway and after that you know there's an alert to this vwap or you can say sometimes it's a moving average or anything like that so that's how you would do it so that's going to be it for this video if you enjoy like and subscribe all the tools i use to day trade or link in the description